Believe it or not, hacking games with Python is actually possible. Using Python for game hacking allows you to use a massive collection of libraries and take advantage of super simple syntax to get complex things done in no time at all. However, the catch is that a working knowledge of C and the Windows API is a must. We'll actually be using C types and functions, so there's no way around learning the basics. So to get started, we're obviously going to need a Windows machine. We're going to be extensively using the Windows API, so almost no part of this video is going to translate well to a different operating system. We're going to be using the latest version of Python, which you can download from python.org. And finally, you'll need a text editor of your choice. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. So the first step in hacking games with Python is understanding what C types is. C types is a part of the Python standard library which allows you to use C data types and call functions from native libraries. So let's have a look at some Python code using the C types library. Alright, so to use C types, all I have to do is type import C types. I don't actually have to install anything because C types is part of the Python standard library, which means it's already included in your installation. Now to make a variable with a C data type, all I have to do is type C types dot C underscore and then the data type that I want to make. So I'm going to make a C boolean and I'm going to set its value equal to true. And it's just that simple. Now I have a variable containing a C boolean which I can pass into a native function. But we still need to import the library so we can use this variable. All we have to do is instance a new CDLL object. And we can do that by typing ctypes.cdll and then including the path to the library in the constructor. But Windows system libraries are already accessible from ctypes.windll. So putting all of that together, it becomes clear how we can use C types to access the Windows API. Now I'm going to write a simple hello world using message box A. We can first grab message box A from the user32 system library. And this function takes four arguments, a handle to the owner window, the message itself, the message box title, and the type of message box. Now the catch is that none of the Windows API constants are defined for us. So for example, the type of message box would be MBOK. But we can't just type MBOK, we have to define MBOK. So when writing hacks with Python, you're going to be referencing Microsoft's documentation quite frequently. So to call this function, I actually need to define two constants. The first being null, which is equal to zero, and then MBOK, which is also equal to zero. Now let me go back up here and actually assign this to a variable. And then I can go down and fill out two of our four arguments. Now both the text and the title are C strings, so I need to initialize two new C character pointers. And I can do that by typing C types dot C underscore char underscore P. Now I need to initialize this with a string, but a regular Python string object does not work. It needs to be a byte string. So let me quickly copy this over here, and I'm going to set the message to hello from Python, and just make the title alert. Now if everything went well, I can execute this, and I should see my message box. Now let's actually move on and write a real hack. So I'm going to break this project into three different files. I'm going to have my main hack file, but I'm also going to have a constants file and a utilities file. In the constants file, I'm going to define Windows API constants. And in the utilities file, I'm going to implement basic game hacking functions like resolving a method's base address and nopping bytes. Now for my main function, I'm going to import C types, my utility file, and then I'm going to import everything from my constants file. Now I generally don't recommend that you do this because you're polluting your namespace. But in this case, I want to be able to access every variable that I define in here without having to type consts dot something. And I'm going to be very intentional about not creating conflicts. So I'm just going to be implementing all of the functions from the first external hack section of the Game Hacking Bible. I'm just going to be converting these functions one to one. I'm not going to be making too many changes besides syntax. And I'm going to explain the changes that I've made to the scripts as I go. 
So the first function that I've implemented is git proc ID. This is the function that takes the name of our executable and resolves the process ID. It works by enumerating a list of all running processes using the create tool help 32 snapshot method. And this method is stored within kernel 32. Now for this method call, we actually had to define a constant. And here I've defined th32 cs snap process which tells create tool help 32 snapshot to include all processes. And right below it, we had to define one more constant value called invalid handle value. Its value is negative one, and we're using it to make sure that this function call did not fail. And finally, right below that, we have our last constant that we defined for this method, but it's actually a pretty complicated constant. So it looks really weird, but what you're looking at right here is actually a C structure made with the C types library. And we've assigned all of the fields of this struct to this fields list. Each entry is a tuple containing the name of the variable and the type. And that's really all there is to it. It looks a little bit more complicated than it really is. And you can find these structures documented on Microsoft's official documentation. So basically all you have to do is copy this over and convert it to Python C-type syntax. There's one more Python syntax quirk going on here, and that is that Python does not have do while loops. So to emulate this behavior, I'm calling this sub function one time and then looping. And this non-local keyword means that we are not assigning a local right here, we're using this process ID variable. All right, now here is the Python implementation of git module base address. It works almost identically to git proc ID in that it iterates over all of the modules in a process, compares it against our input, and then returns something conditionally. We're using the same exact function create tool help 32 snapshot, but we're using different parameters. And those two parameters we had to define in our constants file. Both th32cs snap module and th32cs snap module 32 are now defined in our constants file, and we've also had to add a new struct for modules. So now I'm going to implement find DMA addy, which will resolve multi level pointers, and I'll be back when I've got that finished. Now this function did not require any sort of constants to be added, but there is one quirk that I need to address. C types does not have a built-in unsigned integer type. So instead of an unsigned integer, we've set our base address to a 64-bit integer, which can contain both. And then we set the size of the read based upon the architecture argument, which defaults to 64-bit, but can be set to 32-bit. So finally, patching bytes is just as simple as it is in C or C++. The only Python specific thing that I've had to do is define the page execute read write constant. I've also defined a not bytes function which just wraps patch bytes and passes it a string of nops of size. And with all of that out of the way, we have everything that we need to write a real external Python hack. Now, if any of this did not make sense to you, I suggest that you follow through with this in C++ with the game hacking Bible before you try Python. But by now you should really see the idea behind this. Whenever you're trying to do something that you would in C++, you need to look it up on Microsoft's documentation. You need to define all of the constants you're gonna be using yourself. And then the only difference is really language syntax. Now, the next thing I'm gonna be doing is opening a salt cube and figuring out what I'm going to do with my hack, and then we'll actually write and test the hack. Okay, so I've decided that my external will nop the ammo decrement that executes every time you shoot. And I'm also going to set the current ammo value. So first things first, I'm going to get the process ID using our utility get proc ID function. So let me start assault cube, and then I'm gonna find the name of the process in task manager. And we can see that the name of the process is ac client. So back in our main script file, I'm going to type 
utility dot get proc id and then the argument should be the name of the executable now i'm going to assign this to a variable and i'm going to print it out just to see if everything's working all right and it seems that i've forgotten to include win types from c types so i'm going to do that really quick in every file that's going to use win types And now if I execute this again, and I check the process ID in task manager, we can see that our function's working. So the next step is to get a handle to this process, which means that we need to import kernel 32 from C types. And we need to add a constant so that we can call open process. I'm going to add the process all access constant. And this definition can be found in Microsoft's documentation. So now I can actually call open process. And then I'm going to use our utility function to get the base address of the AC client module. Now I'm going to nop the ammo decrement And finally, I'm going to set the current ammo value by first resolving this base address. Resolving the pointer chain. And then I'm going to write to the current ammo address using write process memory. Now I'm going to close the process handle and try executing our hack. And it seems like everything worked as we wanted. Now that you understand the fundamentals, I would highly recommend that you check out PyMem. It's a mature Python library that really cuts down on the boilerplate. Using PyMem, I've managed to condense our entire external into around seven lines. You don't have to deal with opening the process yourself. You don't have to deal with resolving the process ID. You just need to make a new PyMem object with the name of the executable, and everything is handled behind the scenes. PyMem will automatically retrieve the main module's base address, and it also has functions to write bytes and different data types. The only part of the code that we just wrote that is necessary is the find DMA addy function. You can install PyMem by typing pip install PyMem and it'll make your life a whole lot easier so I seriously recommend that you use PyMem. Now in the next video we're going to make an internal Python hack. We're going to talk about injecting the Python VM and then using that VM to execute Python code in any process. And we've also got a write-up about this exact subject in our Python game hacking course. If you enjoyed this video, a like would help a lot, and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. If you haven't already, check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking and an ever-growing catalog of content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.